Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. There we go. Okay, so thank you very much for coming. Um, this is the Women in Gaming panel at RimCon 2018. I am proud and pleased to be sitting at the table with all of these lovely human beings. It is very, it's, it's kind of humbling. It's kind of humbling to sit with this amount of awesome at the same table. It really is. Um, yes, you're so sweet. <laughs> no, I, I don't, and I'm not. I'm not just saying that because I'm a contrarian. I want you to come back. (laughs) (laughs) I'm saying that because these are all women who are doing amazing things. These are all women who have projects and who have things that are really pretty cool and promoting uh, promoting women in gaming. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of what we're doing today. Um, This is really I'm hoping to be a panel that celebrates wonderful things that are going on and celebrates solutions to problems rather than focusing on problems. Um, because there, there are problems. We, we all know there are problems. But to me, the important part is to not dwell on how much of a problem the problem is, but to figure out how to, how to move past it, how to move forward, how to involve people in the fixing of the problem. So I wanted, uh, maybe we can start out with um, kind of introducing ourselves and who are we and what do we do. I'm Karen Iron. Hi. 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 Yeah, I'm in every episode. I am directing it behind the scenes. I do all the video editing, and that is what I do. So. Hello, I'm uh, Lori Hound, and I do live shows for Steve Jackson Games. I'm also the director and producer of my own content on my own channel. I'm a game demonstrator, I'm a writer, um, I'm a board game enthusiast. I mean, well, really all gaming. I mean, I love video games and everything, but board games seems to be where it landed at. Um, but uh, just, you know, the technical aspect on everything, on producing all of your videos and stuff, that's been the highlight of uh, this year, I think, for me. Hi, I'm Meeple Leakey. Um, I write about board games and I edit rule books. Um, freelance editor for rule books and I podcast. I was running and co-hosting and producing a podcast for a while for Funky, um, but it's since left, and now I am on a five to five games of reviews of board games. Hi, I'm Marissa Kelly, and um, I work, uh, I'm co-owner of a tabletop role-playing game company called Magpie Games. Um, I also have worked as a uh, art director for over a hundred products and I um, have supervised and helped out with um, Kickstarters uh, enough to total over $2 million and uh, I like games. It's <laughs> <laughs> the important part. Yeah. Uh, I'm Sarah Reed. I'm a game designer. Um, I co-design with my husband. We have two published games, Project Dreamscape and Oaxaca. Uh, I'm also on a podcast, Our Turn Podcast. Um, I do games too. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I do a lot of stuff. 
stuff. So I'm trying to remember, I'm a big, uh, I love Kickstarter, so I'm a big supporter of different Kickstarters, uh, having helped run, you know, our own too. Um, I created the 10 by 10 challenge. Oh, uh, was that that's me. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, we've got a really wide range of people in, and what they do and what their interests are and what their experience is and so forth. Um, I was really hoping to get that here because there are a lot of um, a lot of directions that different kind of subfields of tabletop gaming are going in. And I'd like to be able to get a chance to hear from all of them because I don't have time to keep up, do the deep dive on all of them. And I'm sure that none of us do either. So um, I'd like to start out with maybe something, um, a, a question that um, that somebody else asked me at one point, and I didn't have a, um, a great answer, but I think that you ladies might um, talk. Could you could you talk a little bit about um, any mentoring that you've gotten in terms of what you do? Do you have any role models? Do you have any mentors? Has there anybody who's influenced you? Anyone um, specifically uh, a it would be great if you had a, a woman mentor, but if not, why not? Why, 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 I mean, talk, talk about the situation, why, um, how it was that there wasn't one. I wish that there were more women mentors because that would be yeah, exactly. freaking awesome. <laughs> um, I would have to say that my mentor in a lot of this has been Dan King, um, the Game Boy Geek, and uh, it's interesting because uh, because I specifically interface with board game media and content creators, and I feel like a lot of people um, are out there for themselves, but then you get like little pockets of people like Edward from Heavy Cardboard and stuff that um, you get a moment to talk with them, and they like teach you the ropes. You know, they take you places that you wouldn't have been able to go before. Um, they talk to you about how you should be doing. Um, like promoting yourself and stuff like that because I think as a woman, um, I know for myself, it's really hard to promote and sell myself. <laughs> like that's just one of the things that's hard for me to do um, because I feel like as a woman, you're a little bit more reserved sometimes in things. Um, but having a mentor is huge, huge in the industry and someone to kind of help lift you up um, where you wouldn't have maybe been seen before, I think. So, um, yeah, the same. Also, uh, two mentors come to mind, um, Dan, the Game Boy Geek, because yeah. we're local, we actually game with him a lot. Um, the same processes of, like, um, how do you, how to just, you know, in addition to creating your content, like, maximizing your time um, in what you want to focus on. And, you know, like, people always say, do what you love. And that's true to some extent, but also, you know, like, we are all super busy, so you sort of just have to focus on like what you really, really want to do and go with that. And um, the other mentor I have, um, Suzanne Sheldon on Twitter, she's fabulous. And she was one of the first people that I had met um, way back when I started writing. Um, just seeing another Asian American woman like making the circuits, being very active, very vocal, working for diversity and inclusivity, um, and having someone to bounce ideas off that in terms of like um, how you know, being the minority in this entire industry. So it's been great having people like that and um, just, you know, the community at large, like, I think for the most part, like us women are all very supportive of each other and that's always great. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, can you hear me again? <laughs> so I haven't really had a mentor going into all of this and I've kind of had to make it up as I go. Mm -hmm. um, make my own life of it. And I hope when I'm creating products, when I'm making Twitches and streams and YouTube videos and Dwarven Forge builds, I'm encouraging other girls to get in there, get their game on. So, nope. absolutely. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll just uh, piggyback on Suzanne. Um, I spent a lot of my time on Twitter, and so there's a lot of wonderful women um, in the Twitterverse whatever you want to call it. Um, Katie also comes to mind, and uh, Kathleen Mercury. There's just, there's a, there's a really strong community 
on Twitter, and I think that's really gotten me through a lot. Um, not necessarily how do I be a better game designer, but how can I make it through some tough environments, how to stay strong, and uh, not give up. They're very, they're, they're, they're facing a lot of challenges. They get a lot of backlash. I mean, when Suzanne and Mandy uh, joined the Dice Tower as on the podcast, they got a lot of negativity, and but they stayed strong and they didn't give up. And so just having those role models of continuing to pursue what you are passionate about, you're gonna face adversity, but it's worth the struggle in the end. Uh, I think that the women in tabletop gaming have sort of paved the way for something like a product like Bluebeard's Bride, a horror game about basically violence against women uh, and a haunted house game, um, <laughs> is really possible because of a whole bunch of women who, who've laid that groundwork and done a lot of hard work and um, just, just put in the time and the effort, and I didn't really get to know them until after I was already publishing and doing things, so I wouldn't exactly call them mentors, um, but um, some of the organizations that uh, I've helped to found and have direct mentorship programs where we help people, young designers, uh, you know, diverse designers, um, sort of have someone to reach out to and talk to and uh, become, like, build a real relationship um, with them. Uh, we also have, you know, programs within my personal company that do similar things. Um, but personally, I guess my mentor would be uh, Spite. That was probably my main <laughs> uh, I really nurtured Spite. And uh, uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of people sort of set these goalposts, and I was like, oh, that's what it'll take to be taken seriously? Cool, I'll do that. Um, but I think what really made that successful is having having my team that was doing it with me. Like, I, I don't think I, my, the games I would have made would have been a billion times worse. The, the business I have wouldn't function without my team. Um, so it's definitely not me. And most of the, my early team was men, and I, couldn't be happier with that. I think they were amazing and continue to be amazing. And uh, I wouldn't want to do this with just women or just men, but like having everybody at the table bring in their A game is, is really what it's all about. Cool. Um, okay. So, do you want to talk about something that is um, great or helpful or has moved us forward that you have seen lately? It doesn't have to be something, a project that you've done yourself, just something that, that, that kind of grabbed your interest and said, oh, oh, that's cool. That's 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 neat. Something that, that, that made you think like about, yeah, that's that's moving us forward. That's 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 a positive step. Anything in, in the comic world, in the um, well, in the gaming world, anywhere, Twitterverse, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, two things, just being here at RingCon, having this um, women's space, and um, it's a really cool like area for women, you know, to play games, to feel safe, to be around other women, and I think that's a great um, feature for this con, and I never, I don't think I've run into a convention that has a similar space like that. And um, wow, and I, you know, we were talking about it earlier, like why don't other cons do this? This is great, like. Um, so that's a cool thing, and just you know, being very um, promotional of everything. Um, the second thing, in my experience as a rulebook editor, like you know, inclusive language, it's a very easy thing to do, and you can change rulebooks and not have all of the him and everything. And um, seeing that kind of movement now, um, you know, like. Ten years ago, okay, fine. This rule book was written ten years ago, but like now, there's no excuse for having rule books to not have that inclusive language anymore. I think that as the industry has grown and more women have um, come into the industry and have been more accepted into everything, that that in turn has made a platform for us to grow even further. Because now it's not just me and one other person. That's a woman getting together and. Uh, trying to collaborate on things or show that, hey, we are here in the gaming industry. Now we have so many more other people to work with. And that 
makes such a huge difference because, you know, going on Twitter earlier and then having, you know, a bunch of people message you and maybe 1% of those people were female. And now, like, I specifically go and follow female designers. I follow female artists. I go out of my way to help integrate all of these women into our community and into gaming and making them feel better. And it's not just me doing that. It's like every woman like is doing it as a collective. And I really, really love that. Sorry. Um, I think, I think you can't hear me. I feel like um, women in general become more supportive of each other. There isn't as much of a competitive pressure. There we go. It's a lot better. Um, I feel like we're just all working together and really supportive of each other. Like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I get really supportive messages from other women, and that's just you know what I have been picking up in the past few years is my experience in here. So that's just been really great. Cool. Cool. It, it's nice to hear that there is so much kind of bouncing off of walls together and, and supporting each other and that kind of thing. Um, well, I'll piggyback on that. Yeah, I don't please. need my um, sorry, I grew up in the theater. My whisper is a stage whisper, so my husband makes fun of me all the time. Um, I really appreciate that there's a lot of publishers now that are really purposefully making better art choices and better art direction. And it's amazing and it's wonderful to see that. I've been, I've been lucky to be able to uh, sometimes give feedback because I'm on Twitter a lot, I'm on Kickstarter a lot and even in some different Facebook groups, and one of the design groups I'm on on Facebook, there is this one guy, he and some other guys are developing a card game based on a MOBA-type video game. All of their artwork, unfortunately, is very sexualized mm -hmm. for women. The thing I've been happy about is that he has been taking my feedback. So he will post a new picture, that you know, art piece that they've been working on, and I'll go on there, and the first time, I really wasn't sure whether I should say anything. Um, because you never know, I've had some not so good interactions. One commenting, I'm like, hey, could you change this a little bit? And they pretty much say, no, go away. And this guy was actually really nice, and he responded positively. So as he continues to post, granted, so far I haven't seen a lot of changes in the art style, but I appreciate that at least he's having an open dialogue with me like the last picture he posted, the woman had, the shirt was like a full neck collar and it went down and it got past the nipples and then stopped. <laughs> so you can see the bottom half of her boobs and I'm like, okay, can you give her a little bit more money so she can buy the rest of the shirts? <laughs> and you know, he responded well to that type of thing. And, and so like, I'm hopeful while I haven't seen change, at least he is being open to change. So there's that. <laughs> All right, so um, here's a potentially fraught question, so if you choose to duck out, I am totally fine. Um, how do you feel that the, that the experience is different for you, for you as a woman, as a designer, as a player, as a, as a at this point, a heavy hitter in the field? I mean, how, how do you feel like your experience as a woman has been different? Yeah, um, I mean, a woman's experience in any more male-driven thing is always going to be completely different from, um, I use this, uh, this thing where, like, if you're in a playground and somebody walks up to a group of kids with a ball, and who do you think that they're going to give that ball to? You know, you think, usually give that ball to a boy, and then that boy gets to lead that situation. And it's little things like that that happen all the time um, that because you're male, you have no idea that you're doing it. You know, you just like instinctively go, oh, this little boy's gonna wanna play with this ball. And then he's going to lead the playtime for everybody else, whether there's girls or boys there. And in a male-driven field, it's always like that. You know, um, women, you have to fight for the ball. <laughs> 
you have to step up and go, hey, actually, I wanted to be leader, or hey, you know, I wanted to play with this first, or you know what, I have a really good idea to do this. And um, you can get a negative reaction for that, but you have to keep doing it, and that's kind of the thing. Despite the negative reactions, you kind of have to keep going with that. Kind of, uh, kind of like how a boy would, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, but yeah, your every interaction um, in the field is just completely different, and it's hard to explain to uh, men how different it is because they just can't see the perspective, you know? So on my birth certificate, my name is Griffin. My mother named me Griffin with the idea that, you know, we would continue to have resumes that were just paper, you know, no profile pictures, no LinkedIn's like that. And she said, or she thought, that with the name Griffin, I get hired more because they think I was a man. So that's why I have my name. Yeah. <laughs> and now I use it as a form of empowerment. Everyone always says to me, oh, I thought Griffin was a boy's name. I say, nope, it's my name. <laughs> That's very true because I specifically went in and I, I used Lori House specifically because of that. In the beginning, um, I wanted people to think that I was a male writer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think I've learned a lot from my failures, from like I said earlier, my team, and that uh, I've had products that have you know. We worked real hard on. They released. They're not popular. They kind of, <laughs> they're they're okay. Um, and I think that uh, we, I have to keep. And this doesn't just go for women, but you just have to keep uh, having, you know, support your own learning uh, and growing, and make sure that your team also does that. Um, and you have to keep putting in more, uh, putting out more products is on the publishing side. Um, until you do uh, get that hit. Um, and I think that a hit is what you're gonna be looking for in publishing. You want that stability that comes from that. Uh, you want your voice and products to reach a lot of people. Um, and to do that, you gotta keep working. Um, and you can't get so discouraged that you quit a little like what you were saying. Right. Um, because because there's enough, there's a line of mediocre white dudes that will quit and fail and replace each other, um, but there aren't as many uh, minorities who are going to be able to do the same thing. Um, so I think that just being a little more resilient uh, is important. And however you you get that capacity is is great. Like whether or not your internal team is amazing, or you have a good support network at home, or you just you know go out and dance your heart out every Tuesday evening or whatever it is that you do, uh, so long as you make sure you have a thing that allows you to keep working and doing the work uh, and cranking out stuff and closing and, and making more stuff. Um, back to the original thing, I guess just being a woman in this industry, you have to grow a thick skin. I mean, that is the reality of everything. Um, you'll probably be judged by how you look, how you carry yourself, um, what your brand will be. And there's always going to be so much negativity and awfulness on the internet um, that comes back at you. And the thing you can do, just like what you said, be resilient, keep doing what you do, do what you love, surround yourself with the positive people who will help you, mentor you, and you know, what's one person's negativity, you know, try to um, take that into account versus all the other good stuff that you end up producing. So uh, I'm hearing from a lot of people up on the front of this, uh, in the front of this room that there's a lot of perseverance and there's a lot of feeling like there's, it, it's almost like you're, you're going against an adversary, that there's, that there's some kind of a, I need to beat something. Or I need to push harder. I need to be better. I need to that that kind of thing. Is that is that a, has that that been a motivating factor for you? I know, I know you said that it, that it's fight. <laughs> <laughs> but has that has that kind of that that kind of oh oh no 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 you can't tell me anything. Is that is, is has that been motivating? Has that been a motivating factor for you? Yeah. Um, 
I'm sure it happens. I don't like being bossed around. <laughs> thing, so, um, yeah. Yep. Um, definitely. I mean, <laughs> spite is a very big motivating factor. You're like, you can't do that. Well, yes, I can, and I'll do it better than you. Okay. <laughs> Just That's, watch. Yeah, exactly. That's mine. Um, so this is a thing I encountered early on. Um, I play a lot of heavy heroes and war games, and I obviously do not look like your typical war gamer. And um, people, you know, designers have asked me, like, how do we get women more interested in war gaming? Um, and one of the things that I had offered, um, just to women, like, in the beginning, I would never go into a game full. Like, I would always right. research the game, read up on it, so, you know, you're still learning with everyone else, but that's a thing that I sort of had to do, like, in the beginning, just because, again, you walk into a room of, you know, 200 white males and there's me. <laughs> um, so you kind of had to know what you're talking about. I mean, granted, um, now I feel like a lot more people are, I mean, people are more welcoming. They'll teach new gamers, and, you know, spaces like, um, Raycon women's space, it's nice because then they'll be able to learn the games in one picture of the place. But those are the things that I had to do like in the beginning, yeah. I guess. Uh, I think it, it, for me, I, I probably don't actually just say <laughs> uh, <laughs> to everybody who, who disagrees with me, but I, I actually do believe in disagreement, and I think it's, it's the primary way that most of us grow and that uh, I do want to hear feedback, I do want to know what sucked about what I did, and I want to make it better. Um, and, you know, just like any kind of feedback, some of that, you know, you kind of take and throw away, and some of it you hold on to longer than you should, but I think that's just human and that's normal, and uh, yeah, I think it's super important to keep people around with different viewpoints and, uh, and, and just sort of, ideas than you have as well. I don't think I have much to add. Everyone really said it very well. It's just, yeah, it's perseverance and not letting the other people, you know, say no. Um, then there's also overcoming the internal challenges because when you're told you're not good enough, sometimes that can get internalized and then you have your own internal demons that you have to continually fight and say, yeah, I can do this because I am good enough and I can do it. So you've got sometimes both internal and external forces that you have to overcome to achieve what you want to do. I've seen a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that internal piece of it is, it's, it's, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's exclusive to females, but it certainly does seem to be stronger with women. Again, why do you think it is that that it's stronger it's stronger with us than we're than... told so well, we're told no. Yeah. Most yeah, of okay. our life okay. yeah. it's we have to follow certain rules of what we can and can't do because oh that's not ladylike. You can't climb a tree. That's not ladylike. You can't run. You can't cross the street by yourself. I mean there's a lot of restrictions placed on us. And then as you get older and then if you're not, you know, meeting people's expectations still, it keeps coming back to, no, you're not doing good enough, no, you're not. And so it wears down our own internal psyches instead of where boys are like, they're told to go be boys. Go ahead, go ahead, do whatever you're gonna be. Oh, well, they'll get it out of their system or whatever. And they are not told no as much. I'm sorry, generalizing. Um, it's what it feels like sometimes. So then when you grow up, and sometimes it's hard to have confidence in yourself when as a kid, so many people told you no. And so how do you go and say yes when everybody said no for so much of your life? And so I think that happens a lot more to women. And then again, our society reinforces that women should be in touch with their feelings where men are told they shouldn't be in touch with their feelings. Not that they don't have them, because they still do. It's just they're not as in touch with those feelings. So it, it, that then has its other issues because it could come out as anger and those type of things. But um, imposter syndrome is really strong in women because we're just told that we're not good enough to do what it is we want to do. And so we have to overcome that. Oh, I'll add to that. 
I had two really have two really great parents, super supportive, and um, I guess opposite from your experience. I was I mean, was told no, <laughs> but um, I was encouraged to do my thing, to play basketball and be a cheerleader. I would go from putting a bow in my hair to putting on my basketball shorts. You know, I played all the sports I wanted. I would play in the mud, um, and my parents were just really encouraging. And maybe that's because I'm younger and times have changed, they are changing for the better. I, um, but I think encouraging new parents to like let your daughters play the Lego boys, you know, they say boys, you know, they separate the target, the kids area, but they're trying to incorporate them now. So, uh, is it at Target? They yeah, have yeah. the boys and girls are now starting to be <laughs> <laughs> started on the same aisle, but she's still got mini dolls. Don't get me started, Legos are another hobby. <laughs> yeah, we chose two really expensive hobbies, board games and Lego. <laughs> but, yeah, but the thing, though, that still gets me is the fact that they just felt that they had to come out with the mini doll in the first place to get girls attracted. Because, again, it comes back to our society, mm-hmm. says this is what's acceptable for girls and this is what's acceptable for boys. Yeah. But it's it's you got a point. It's it's there's a, a picture someone once showed me. And it's a father, and they're a father with a daughter and a son, and they're walking through the mud. The father is holding the daughter, and letting the son run through the mud. And honestly, he should be letting both the kids run through the mud because that's teaching the girl that she should not be free. Yeah, I think there's a constant just fighting. Um, the person that you've been told to be as far as like a reserved female figure, you know, and um, putting yourself like putting yourself out there exposes you to everything, and um, you can't help but start beating yourself up about things. And I've always told uh, people that it doesn't matter what people say about me on the internet because I am the worst judge of myself. Um, because I am, I just I, I'm constantly beating myself up over the way that society says I should be, you know? And it's kind of hard to try to toss all that to the side and then pave your own way with that. But we have some lovely ladies helping everybody out doing that now. So that makes things a lot easier to be able to talk to those people. Um, I'm not sure I agree with most of any of this, <laughs> um, but I think uh, I don't think women harbor some sort of natural connection to this that other people don't. Um, I think culturally you're you're going to be sort of raised in certain situations that might impact the way you feel about yourself and the way you feel about challenges and the way you feel about other things that have some things to do with gender and some things to do with family dynamics, some things to do with peer dynamics, uh, just resources that you might have in your life or not have in your life. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of these incentives uh, that that we're responding to, uh, like the Target aisles and the, the mini dolls, uh, have a lot to do with just capitalism and how uh, the demographics of that, we were talking about it in the other panel earlier, <laughs> diversity, um, how, how that actually impacts and influences what is out there and what we see visually, um, more so than the women who worked on those projects and, and how they are working to subvert or lift up those different femme sort of signifying or something. So, yeah, that, that, the thread that you just pulled there, um, the working within the system. So we're all part of the system, right? We're all part of lots of intersecting systems. Um, how, has, ha, what's been your experience in trying to leverage some of those power dynamics or trying to, as, I like the word subvert, subvert uh, to actively subvert those power dynamics. What do you do to make to, to both advocate for yourself and make it easier for other women to advocate for themselves, um, is it is it about just putting yourself out there? Is it about the words you choose? Is it about the depictions in your in your games? What 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 what, what kinds? Or is or is it just a way of being? 
What, what's, what's, uh, or, or, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa, you're looking like you got to. That's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, so, yeah. really, this is the what we do. Yeah. This is the what we do part. Uh, I think uh, it's important in, okay, I guess I'll kind of separate it out into publishing in particular, um, rather than at the table, which there's a lot you can do um, in both spheres, but I'd say in publishing, it's really important that you build networks of support for the, the women and other minorities that might be a part of your space or you want in your space. Um, and then you would, this is how you are be able, or be able to compete in the marketplace. Um, and that that's one of the most important things is that you are there doing your thing, competing uh, over and over again. Um, and that I really don't believe awareness is enough. I think that you have to be there doing the work. The work has to get done, or else we're just telling a whole bunch of people about a whole bunch of products that suck, and we don't want that. We want the, the products that we're showing off, the people that we're showing off are like doing this badass shit, and that when they'll get hooked, and they'll be like, yeah, these are my favorite things, and it's a wide array of things. Um, and uh, I think at the table, uh, you have a, a really cool opportunity to fail, um, because in business uh, and in publishing, uh, taking a lot of chances is great. Um, like I said, we try and do uh, mentorships to lift people up and, and like build relationships. I think that's core. Um, but at the table, whether or not it's with strangers or not, you actually can fail over and over again and keep trying. Uh, whereas if I fail too much in my company, I won't have the resources to do anything, and then we're kind of like, going backwards, right? So I think individuals have a very cool opportunity to, to grow and, and try again. I think just like doing little things, like we believe you said, where if you're going through rules and making sure that the rules are inclusive, making sure that you know the character cards represent all races and stuff, because words are so powerful and people, well, words and what you see, you know, are so powerful, and people use them in a way that um, they've learned that is natural, that society has taught them and stuff, and just taking that one extra, like, little thought and going, you know what, maybe we should add every type of race that we can to this, you know, maybe we should add men and women, you know, maybe we should uh, add, I mean, just get the full spectrum of everybody in there. And I think the more people see that and the more people read things that are completely inclusive, um, that that becomes the second nature to them, you know? Then it's not reading he, 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 or, um, you know, a white male, white male, whatever. Um, it just, it doesn't, it creates that picture in your mind of having everybody and every type of color uh, as opposed to just one type in your mind when you're imagining things, when you're picturing things. And then uh, you and yourself will change with that, I think. Okay, I'm gonna pull something from a panel that we, uh, another, a similar panel that we did a couple of times, uh, a couple of, I think it was three ring cons ago, right? Maybe two, two or three ring cons ago. Okay, I want you all, right now, close your eyes. Close your eyes. If, if you're okay with that. Close your eyes. Now, picture a gamer. Picture a gamer. Think about a gamer. All right, now open your eyes. What did you see? What did you see? Be honest, what did you see? You don't have to tell me. Why did it look the way it looked? Why, to you, why did that gamer look the way it looked? Why did, why did, that, did that human being have the characteristics that that human being had? That's a, that's a that that's something that we can think about, but we can also then try to think about how do we break that if we don't like what we saw when we closed our eyes and pictured the game. How do how do we make that not what we see? So so I actually had a really interesting um really interesting uh, experience. The first time I did that with the person who who, who led that experience, uh, I, I I saw what a what a 
probably is the stereotypical Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And then right after I saw that, I had this experience of my brain absolutely denying it and saying, no, 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 that's not it. And then it just kind of got turned into this like uh, mishmash of all of people that I knew. But not, it, it, and it was, it was, it was a, for me a really interesting experience of that initial reaction of, I reject this, I, re, I reject this. And that kind of gets into the, the, the spirit that a lot of people have been kind of bringing in here of, I will not accept this as, I will not accept this status quo, that the status quo isn't okay, and I'm going to be kind of active about moving it forward. Um, so what, uh, is anybody willing to share with yourself? Experiments up here. I'm a psychologist by trade. It's very that was very powerful. Yeah, um, I should pay you. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was, it, was, it was it was a theater instructor uh, and and a ex consummate GM who did it. That was fantastic. It was. Yeah, no, I, I give all credit all credit to Lon Scarabi. He's a professor up at uh, up at ASU. Really amazing guy, um, he, and he does a lot for for encouraging diversity and that kind of thing. He wrote a play called um, uh, "She Kills Monsters" about um, D and D in a girl's head. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 yeah. Look up Lance Garabi, G H A R A V I. He's phenomenal. But anyway, <laughs> does anybody does anybody have a, or or does anybody have a reaction to to uh, to what they saw? We have people. Could you spell that one more time? G H A R A V I. First name Lance. Thank you. Like the medieval weapon. Yeah. Oh, I had to to a certain degree. I also thought of two separate aspects. There's people who play games, and then when you say gamer, though, that means more extreme to me. Mm -hmm. Fair point. Fair and point. so I had like multiple images depending on which label I want to put on. Okay. Okay. So so the word gamer was tapping into some stereotypes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, um, just saying the word gamer, the first thing I'm thinking of is somebody playing Xbox with their headphones on that is male and sitting in front of a TV. Not, not, not a board gamer, not, I mean, that was the first thing that came into my head. And then I was like, no, that is not okay, it. Okay. I'm like, it is me. I am the person that was the gamer. <laughs> yeah, and then that was replaced by that. But you're right. That was like the instant image that hit my head was just... That, that video gamer style of like a younger male, you know, okay. doing that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a, a common thing that I encounter. Um, oh, I write about games. And they're like, oh, video games? You know, yeah. like, no, the cardboard variety, look in the box. Um, but yeah, I have the same, you know, when you say gamer, you have the stereotypical white male that pops up and everything. And, you know, one of the things, um, I talked about in the previous panel with um, diversity and inclusivity, you know, just being visible. Um, someone like me that looks like this being at a place and, you know, encouraging other women to just, you know, if you like playing this game, just go for it. Like, you know, seeing other women, people of color, locations that aren't, you know, predominantly them. Um, and then eventually, you know, that community the inclusive community will start growing from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm, from based on talking with other people's experience, I don't think that I got started out kind of, in a sense, privileged in that I started with gaming with D&D &D, uh, 1974 at U of A, that the very first session I showed up at there was a woman there. And so for me, it's never been a big deal. And then as we start playing during college, girlfriends and then now our wives, and we're still, I'm still playing with this, some of the same people I played with in college back in the 70s. Now, with our, with our, 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 uh, our SOs and then their kids too have gone through and now they're now they've actually gone a little, and they're having their own kids. And stuff. Right, right. And it's like I, I, you know, I've never saw the difference. It's I'm funny though that you say that because you're like, it was almost like you were surprised. You're like, there was a woman there. Well, <laughs> the thing is, is it, it's, I'm, I'm saying that because of what other people have said after that. It's like that's all this male club and everything. It's like, 
That was never my experience. It was like, you know. I, I wasn't allowed to go to the end. No, I, I tried to get into the indie, and I was never let in. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. That's you, you would think that my yeah. school cis white males would like to play with. <laughs> but, know, right? but they didn't. They didn't want to play. Why do you have that girl? Like, okay, <laughs> fine. I'll just go take my Tolkien someplace else. Thanks. Um, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. You know, it's, it's a very different experience, you know, being, I mean, that, that was, I guess, Interesting and unfortunate for you, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, 20 years ago, being always the only woman at the table. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, okay. There's there's another okay. perspective on that one, and I would say that you know it's it's a lot different and a lot better now that we you know when I'm not always the only woman at Good. the table. Fortunately, yeah. 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 finally, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And when I started gaming, which was I mean back when I was like 18 probably. Uh, going into my first game store, I was the only woman that went into that game store for many years. So, it, aside from maybe somebody's mom that came to pick them up, and that was it. So, mm -hmm. and that was here in Arizona too. So, well, uh, for me, same thing in high school. I was the only woman, I guess I was lucky enough that I had friends, they taught us how to play, it wasn't D&D, &D, it was Palladium Fantasy, but we still yeah. role play, yeah. and hey, somebody recognized you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I always say yeah, that, they're like, fun. what? And then I say Risk, and they're like, oh, but it's not Risk, we actually never played Risk. <laughs> Anywho, don't get me started, I'm not a fan of the percentile system, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It got us started, and so it was one of those things that I had, at that time, I was the only girl in the group, there were five guys, me, and the occasional girlfriend that would cycle in and out. Mm -hmm. And I was the only nerd girl, geek girl, whatever you wanted to call it. And um, at that point, though, it's like, for me, I didn't want to be a part of any other you know, groups and cliques and things like that. I liked what was going on. We played video games. I mean, we played EverQuest when that first started, trying to figure out how to connect our computers up together. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we started all that, but it was hard sometimes. If it was just my friends, it wasn't so bad. But when we started playing Magic the Gathering and we actually started going to stores to do tournaments, that was when I had my first bad experience. I have to say it wasn't as bad as I've heard, but I walked in that store and it did go quiet. There was only men, either the people working or other high schoolers or young adults, and it was all male, all white, and they didn't know what to do with a woman or a girl, because I mean, I was only like 16 or 17 walking into that store. Right. And it was not fun to play in that tournament. No, now, I'm, I am grateful nobody was offensive, nobody directly did anything, but he was un. It was not fun. And after that, if my friends wanted to go play in a tournament, I was like, no, thank you. I'll continue to play casually. I enjoy your company because you accept me for who I am. But all those other guys out there, I just felt every one of them was just judging me. And that's a hard situation to deal with. And I think, uh, going back a little bit, I think, to what you were asking about how to make these changes, yeah. uh, right, right. I think if you want more women or just people that you like, I guess, <laughs> at your yeah. table, it's important to invite them more than once, more than twice, <laughs> um, ask what they did or didn't like, and then accommodate. Uh, if you're not willing to accommodate, that's cool. Just like know that that's probably a, a fairly reliable recipe. <laughs> if they don't want to go at first, if they don't want to go at, like for a long time, cool, just Make sure they know that the invitation is open, um, and then once you do get them at the table, you know, don't embarrass them, right? Yeah. But like, right. ask them what they liked, what they enjoyed, what like made them excited, and then what they would want to see be different next time. I think that one thing that I would that, that I want to bring in is something that um, another 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 friend who's about my age who was starting a game at about the same time. She, she, she described it as, there's a weight of being the only girl. It's a weight, and you're shouldering that weight, and you're carrying that weight, and it's heavy. And because you, because there is that, I don't know whether I fit. I don't know if I fit here. And that, that there's that, 
you're, there's that possible. You're never no, you're never sure when their gears are going to grind. And she said, it, 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 that, that, does anybody want to comment on that? But that just that that <clears throat> that burden. Um, well, I just have the opposite. Uh, you're just <laughs> I have, uh, in my experience, being with a lot of girls and you know a lot of guys as well, but it's always usually been about half and half. And I'm looking for that. When I was introduced into the you know role playing world, mm -hmm. I was playing. I think you know I think it was just one guy. It was just all those girls. Uh, so awesome. I've had that lovely experience, but I've always felt uh, very comfortable. I was, the guys never took charge, they were never the leaders. Maybe because I put myself in that position, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there may be a bit of a tide shift, but... Um, yeah, what, lovely. Uh, oh, I don't know, right? We need, we need more tide shifts. <laughs> um, a, a weight. Um, I think maybe not a weight for me, but just just definitely that fact that like you don't always fit in the right way. It seems like you know, um, whether it's like off color jokes or something, you're like, dude, like it's not cool, <laughs> you know, um, or something like that. It's it's very odd though. You're right, it's very odd. Um, uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It really is hard to explain. It's just an odd experience. Yeah. Well, I have to say that I'm really happy that over the last about year and a half at work, I've been able to find other women who enjoy games. It's on a casual level, but we're now at a point where we meet every Friday at lunch, and I just bring in a variety of short games to only have a half hour for lunch and I keep trying different games to find out what they like, what they don't like. But what they've told me is they always look forward to Friday because it's just us women in a conference room. We're away from the stresses of work, away from anybody that they might not be interacting with in a positive way. And they feel like they can just relax. And again, it's kind of like the women's safe space here. And, and that's at a, you know, a work level, but they feel comfortable to just you know, let their hair down and they could do something fun for a little while to break up the monotony. And I think making changes like that and finding different avenues in our life to bring women together, I think that's a good place to go. That's it. Good. So um, I guess at this point we should probably be wrapping up. Um, the uh, so just the, the threads that I'm hearing are. Build each other up, obviously. We, we need to and actively build each other up. Seek out the other women. Hire Seek people. out. What's that? Hire people. Hire people. Yeah. Hire, <laughs> hire people of color. Hire women. Hire people with disabilities. I mean, all of it. Hire, yeah. Hire, hire, so yeah, build, build, build it, build it into the corporate cultural culture. Build it into your your business and your life culture. Any other? Any other? Any other things? Too. I mean, not just, um, you know, seeking out women, but, you know, I curate a really good meeting group, you know, of people who aren't douches. <laughs> like, that's how I've always rolled and I've had, like, really positive experiences. So when you meet somebody who's super cool, bring them into the fold and, you know, make that experience awesome. And then that's a keep people coming back. We curate a group of people that aren't douches. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody brings a different perspective, and that's what's important, because if you're role-playing or something like that, and you have a bunch of people of different ethnicities and just all sorts of people there, you're going to get an amazing new perspective on everything. Yeah. I was just wondering, is it, okay, you have a douche in the group. Um, you try to educate him, or you just try to... Inject it. Educate. Oh, always start with Always start with it. Always start with it. Yeah. All receptive. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 You guys are too nice. I just <laughs> reject them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody's offensive enough to offend me, I'm like, no, nah, yeah. you're not for us, man. Like, go find another group, you know, uh, because I want to create a safe environment for everybody. So if everybody is not comfortable with that person because of something they may have said, I'm like, sorry, dude. And I've had to do that before. You get gotta go. You know, you just don't fit with us, and I'm sorry. I would, I would educate them in that moment. Say, all right, all right. You know, 
Let me push them around a bit. <laughs> and then I wouldn't have it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. All right. Put, put them in the place and then them. don't invite them back if they don't appear to be educable. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yes, exceptions are exist and that they're terrible and nothing you do, but I think relationships are the only way to change yeah. people's minds. Yep. You can yell all you want at someone on the internet, they're not listening. I don't care what you say. They're not fucking listening to you because they're on the internet. <laughs> so if you do want to impact people, the only way, and this might be just my delusional I need the internet rant, but I think the only way to do that is to have a relationship with someone where they can communicate with you and you can tolerate them enough to bridge a gap and help them change. Because they're not going to change just because you yelled at them. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. And yeah, sometimes you just, there are those people where you're just like, you're toxic and scary and I don't want anything to do with you. But I would say the majority of people that you already sit down with are not going to be that person. Um, and that I think relationships go every which way. Um, and that when we're looking towards, you know, what celebrates uh, women at the table and, and that's going to be hope. Hope that people are going to listen to you. They, you are going to change people's minds, that you are impacting other uh, other spheres that you couldn't before, um, and that some of those relationships that you have, maybe it's woman to woman, um, maybe it's a, you are the mentor, um, that you're gonna have to nurture some people who, who need some catching up, whether or not that's the guy who's insensitive at your table, or the woman who wants to create a game and you know that game sucks. And you're gonna be like, look, you should kill this darling and, and do your next darling. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a relationship and that takes trust and that takes growth on everybody's part, right? That's, I don't wanna hurt your feelings, but I also know that this is, <laughs> this is probably what you really need from me right now. Yep. Communication, trust, openness, um, and not putting up with things that are not okay. Be, be, being strong enough in yourself to, to, to really know what's not okay and to be able to, to express that, yeah. All right, so keep building us up. Keep building us up. You guys, uh, I'll, I'll use this white male's up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, we are a community. Game, gaming is a community. It's about community. You don't really, there are, yeah, there are solo games, but you play games with people, and hopefully you're playing games with people that you like, and hopefully that you're, you're you're building more of that when you're playing games. So yeah, build build, build each other up. Don't, Don't put up with um, somebody else's messes, and yeah, community build again. We're we're, we're we can be a little more family, right? We could. Agree, yeah. We could. Yeah. We could. We yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's it's been really great to, um, having the conversation. Thank you to all the women up here. We've got. We, we need to keep building each other up and keep and move towards mentoring other women. I think that's that's also the big. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.